Uh, welcome back uh, to this course on uh, condensed matter physics and topology. Uh, so, we were discussing um, the Shu Schiffer Higer uh, model, which is a simple paradigmatic model for uh, topological consideration. That is, uh, it has a, a non trivial phase, which we uh, call it as a topological phase. And um, uh, this happens by tuning the parameters of the Hamiltonian. That is, uh, if you tune the intercell and the intracell hopping in a certain way, uh, when the intercell hopping becomes larger than the intracell hopping, uh, then the system enters into a topological phase. And the topological phase is uh, shown via calculation of the winding number, uh, which uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, closed curve in the uh, dx dy plane uh, and it uh, encloses the origin and um, uh, the trivial phase which is non topological is also a gapped phase but however uh, this closed curve that we had just talked about in the dx dy plane does not enclose the origin okay so just to uh, give you the preliminaries of that so we have uh, written down the uh, Shu Schiffer Higer or the SSH Hamiltonian in momentum space, and uh, it has this form here. So, it has this form uh, where uh, you know uh, these uh, it has an uh, off diagonal form, and these uh, f of k is, of course, these uh, um, t1 plus t2 e to the power minus i k, where k uh, varies from minus pi to uh, plus pi that is the Brillouin zone for one dimensional system. So, uh, this allowed us to write down uh, the Hamiltonian in the form of a massless Dirac Hamiltonian which we have discussed it is a, a d dot sigma and we have also said that um, a possible realization would be uh, these polyacetylene chain uh, which consists of single bond and double bond of carbon atoms these each of the carbon atoms are uh, connected to a um, hydrogen uh, atom, but uh, the hydrogen atom is not important in this. So, it is a carbon atom and uh, carbon has one electron available for conduction per atom. And so, uh, we should get a tight binding Hamiltonian corresponding to this and this is the tight binding Hamiltonian where H alpha beta is uh, uh, it has a form which is a massless Dirac form. Sigmas are the Pauli matrices sigma x, sigma y and sigma z. So, uh, the important information about topology is uh, encoded in this d vector and it is very important to note that this dz is equal to 0 okay, for all k. So, for all values of k dz is equal to 0 which means that uh, uh, the spectrum is gapped always and uh, if uh, uh, the dx and dy which are non-zero, so dx and dy in this plane uh, it is possible uh, to uh, draw or rather plot a closed curve by varying k uh, in the uh, region minus pi to plus pi or within the range minus pi to plus pi. And, uh, uh, this will determine whether uh, there is a trivial phase or a topological phase depending upon uh, we uh, enclose the origin uh, which is given by of course, uh, I mean the d vector uh, its components dx, dy, dz uh, that is equal to a 0, 0, 0. Okay. Uh, so, this d vector um, is uh, has three components and each of these components depend upon uh, these um, the k vector uh, or rather the wave vector, but which is uh, of course, uh, because it is a one dimensional wave vector. So, we call it a scalar. Okay. Uh, so, I, I, in fact, this not being there that is dz equal to 0 uh, gives rise to the topological properties. Just one uh, small point that uh, I need to mention here is that if uh, dz is not equal to 0 that is if you say add a, a mass kind of term. Now, what I mean by that if, if there is a, a term to go with the uh, the sigma z, uh, 
uh, then of course all these visualizing the winding number will be a big problem because uh, in the dx dy dz plane uh, there are actually infinite number of closed loops that may include the origin or exclude the origin so there's no unique way of showing the winding number if uh, all the three components are non zero uh, fortunately here uh, the dz component is 0 and that is why the dx dy uh, which both are functions of k uh, one can actually plot a, uh, a closed curve that either encloses the origin uh, in which case it becomes a, a topological phase and if it does not enclose the origin it becomes a trivial phase. Okay. So, let us see the symmetries of these uh, SSH model. And um, what we mean by the symmetries is uh, we have already discussed uh, various symmetries that are there. So, say chiral symmetry or inversion symmetry or parity or time reversal symmetry and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if we talk about the chiral symmetry, so let us first talk about the chiral symmetry. Okay. And uh, the chiral symmetry would actually mean that, uh, uh, so the chiral symmetry operator in this particular case is nothing but sigma z, okay, which is z component of the Pauli matrix which you see here. Okay. So, that is the chiral symmetry operator and uh, we need to check that whether uh, sigma z uh, h of k, uh, we have already defined h of k, sigma z dagger, this is equal to uh, what so, uh, for uh, you know uh, want to have a chiral symmetry. Okay? Uh, now, uh, it is important to note that sigma z dagger is equal to sigma z because it is uh, uh, it's a Hermitian operator. So, uh, we need to check what is sigma z h of k. Uh, sigma z. Okay. Uh, this is equal to a sigma z, uh, then we have a dx of k sigma x plus a dy of uh, k sigma y and as I said that we are fortunate not to have a, a dz term here okay. and then we will have to write a sigma z here. So, uh, we need to check uh, these quantities uh, dx is a function of solely a function of k and is just a function uh, it is not matrix or an operator. So, we have to check it is a sigma z sigma x sigma z and plus a dy k uh, sigma z sigma y sigma z uh, what it becomes. So, we need to calculate this and we need to calculate this. Uh, so, one way of course, is to uh, multiply 3 2 by 2 matrices that you see here, uh, but uh, we can do better than that. Uh, we can use the properties of this Pauli matrices and the properties of the Pauli matrices are like this. Uh, so, this is a sigma uh, z or say sigma x sigma z uh, that commutation relation is equal to or we can uh, we can write uh, you know if you do matrix multiplications then of course you need to start from the end and this is what we are doing so uh, or we can do the other way around as well so we just write down uh, a sigma z sigma x commutator which is nothing but i sigma y okay so this is a known result from the properties of the pauli matrices and also we can write down the anti commutation relation of sigma z and sigma x which are of course distinct and this is equal to 0. So, if you take both of them, so from both of them what we get is the following that sigma z sigma x minus sigma x sigma z this is equal to i sigma y and sigma z sigma x from the second one a plus sigma x sigma z is equal to 0. Okay. So, if you add both of them this will cancel out and we get a 2 sigma z sigma x 
this is equal to i sigma y which means that sigma z sigma x is equal to i over 2 sigma y okay uh, so this is uh, this only this part that is sigma z sigma x is what we have found out here and now we have to uh, multiply it by a uh, right multiply by a sigma z okay so that's what we'll do so we have a sigma z sigma x sigma z this is equal to i by 2 and what we got here is i by 2 sigma y so we'll write i by 2 sigma y and sigma z okay um, and again uh, we can uh, sort of use this same technique in order to find sigma y sigma z so sigma y sigma z uh, the commutation relation is equal to i sigma x uh, remember that this is cyclic these uh, indices uh, x y z are to be used in a cyclic fashion if you break the cyclic property then you should uh, bring in a minus sign uh, and a sigma y sigma z uh, anti commutation is equal to 0 so this uh, again gives a sigma y sigma z minus a sigma z sigma y that's equal to i sigma x and sigma y sigma z plus sigma z sigma y is equal to 0 uh, again we cancel these two and get a 2 sigma y sigma z is equal to i sigma x and sigma y sigma uh, z becomes equal to uh, i over 2 sigma x. So, if we go back to this term, uh, the first term that we were trying to calculate, uh, so that is dx k, uh, so we took this term, we write consider, okay. And um, so, this becomes equal to uh, the first term. and let us give a name to this uh, let us call it as uh, equation 1. So, the first term of 1 becomes equal to it is uh, i by 2 uh, into well uh, there is uh, uh, there is a i by 2 that uh, we have to take into account uh, because uh, uh, this itself gave a i by 2. So, i by 2 into i by 2 which are to be taken twice and the sigma x and of course you have a d x a function of k. Uh, so, this is nothing but a d x k and then there is a, a, a 1 over 4 which comes from this thing but that can be you know absorbed in the, the there is just a constant factor and sigma x. So, you see what happens is that the term which is a d x k sigma x becomes uh, minus uh, d x k sigma x ok. And uh, similarly, you can uh, check that the second term of 1 is a d y k and again that same thing it is i by 2 into i by 2 sigma y. So, this is equal to minus 1 by 4 dy of k and sigma y. So, if you combine these two, so you have a dy of k sigma y. Uh, so, I mean this becomes equal to under this chiral uh, symmetry operation, it becomes minus dy by k sigma y and so on. Okay. So, this is the transformation of this and uh, so that tells you that a uh, sigma z uh, h of k uh, this is equal to and sigma z this is equal to minus h of k. Okay. So, this is the, the chiral symmetry of the model and this is what the chiral symmetry demands. Okay, all right. So, uh, let me see the inversion symmetry first. So, this is number 2 inversion symmetry. 
okay. And uh, so, inversion symmetry uh, requires one to go from x to minus x, y to minus y and so on, okay. I mean z to minus z. Uh, so, uh, what I mean is that, uh, so sigma x is the operator that does that. And what I mean is by the uh, operator is that the sigma x acting on these operators C A and C B where A and B refer to the two sub lattices that we have talked about. Uh, this becomes equal to a 0 1 1 0 uh, C A C B. Uh, so, this becomes uh, C B C C A. Okay. All right. So, uh, what it tells you is that uh, A and B sub lattices are interchanged under this inversion operation and that that is what we want uh, by the inversion operator. So, uh, you can do this again you can you can see this the sigma x h of k and the sigma x dagger which means it is uh, same as sigma x equal to what and then you can uh, see that uh, your d x of k that becomes a d x of minus k. Uh, so, this is what it becomes under this inversion uh, symmetry. If you want to understand in a hand waving way, k is nothing but the momentum which is dr dt since r changes sign, uh, the k will also change sign and that is what is shown here. And similarly, a dy of k is uh, same as dy of minus dy of minus k. Okay. So, that tells you that uh, your sigma x h of k sigma x is equal to h of minus k. Okay. So, this is the inversion symmetry of SSH model. All right. So, uh, two symmetries we have worked out and let us look at the time reversal symmetry number 3. So, the time reversal symmetry can be obtained or rather the um, corresponding operator is uh, what we call it as k. Uh, which is a complex conjugation operator. So, what it does is that it changes i to minus i and so on so forth. Okay. So, uh, under this uh, you can you can see that your d x of k becomes equal to d x of uh, minus k. So, what you need to look at is uh, what is k h of k, uh, k dagger uh, equal to what. So, um, the d x component uh, of the d vector, x component of the d vector, it uh, sort of transforms according to this and d y will pick up a minus sign which is d y of minus k and so on. And um, so, you see then uh, the time reversal uh, operator or we can call it uh, or uh, t h of k uh, t uh, dagger equal to what. So, t h of k t dagger this is equal to h of minus k and h star of k is equal to h of minus k. Okay. So, this is h star the left hand side and this is equal to. So, uh, this is the symmetry uh, that is uh, if you take the complex conjugate of the uh, Hamiltonian then this becomes uh, same as the Hamiltonian with its k reversing sign. Okay. So, these are the uh, in short the symmetries of this SSH model and if you really combine um, you know t and i. Uh, so, we will call uh, this by i because of the inversion, uh, we can call this as chiral. So, let us call it as c and uh, this has of course, a name which is t. 
So, if you look at uh, you know a combination of I and T, so I and T uh, leaves the Hamiltonian invariant. What I mean is uh, basically if you combine these two symmetries that is I and T, uh, then uh, both uh, I and T uh, this causes the momentum to reverse its sign, but also has uh, there is a minus sign in front of the dy because dy is complex and um, uh, it is done by the inversion operator as well as the time reversal symmetry operator. So, if you combine them the minus sign goes away and then you get this uh, uh, the Hamiltonian to be invariant. So, what we have discussed so far is a simple one dimensional model with dimerization. Uh, what I mean by dimerization is that there are two different hopping uh, one within the unit cell and the other outside the or rather between the unit cells and uh, these two hoppings are different and uh, as uh, uh, one of them becomes larger than the other. Uh, one kind of uh, you know insulating state uh, happens or occurs um, and uh, this insulating state uh, the nature of the insulating state rather is determined by the the winding number which is a topological invariant. So, the winding number is finite or it is equal to 1 as you change k uh, there is a closed loop that forms. Uh, that uh, winds the origin. Uh, the origin is like that singularity that we have talked about uh, earlier and uh, if uh, the uh, other condition holds that is the inter cell hopping is less than the intra cell hopping in which case this closed curve in the dx dy plane does not enclose the origin and represents a, uh, just a, a normal band insulator. So, this is a very important distinction uh, between the two gapped uh, situations. Uh, gapped means uh, the both have a spectral gap, uh, but however, one has a winding uh, number equal to 0, the other has a winding number non 0, which is equal to 1. And um, since the spectrum uh, corresponds both of them being gapped and the gap actually uh, closes or you go from one type of insulating state to the another uh, to the other insulating state by closing the gap at the edges of the Brillouin zone ok. So, uh, now these two insulating states are definitely not identical and that is what we are trying to say over and over again, but um, it is uh, very important to realize that uh, the topological uh, insulator uh, or rather the one that winds the origin actually houses uh, two uh, large edge modes, static edge modes or uh, stationary edge modes at the you know end edges of the system, the two edges of the system. And um, uh, these are shown by calculating the probability density uh, corresponding to the Hamiltonian and they seem to have large weights at the edges whereas, the uh, bulk is uh, absolutely you know uh, conducting which means that it is a the bulk states uh, are like uh, exponential i k x or they are like conducting states and uh, at the edges you one has uh, complete uh, you know um, insulating behavior. So, the bulk is different than the edges uh, makes it a topological insulator ok. So, we will uh, see another model uh, simple model of this kind before we go to more complicated two dimensional model and uh, that uh, model that we want to see now is called as a Kitaev chain ok. And it was um, sort of uh, proposed by Kitaev and uh, it has uh, you know it is a nice model with uh, superconducting correlations ok. So, uh, it shows topological superconductivity what I mean by that is uh, the, uh, the states in the bulk are not superconducting and the states at the edges are superconducting. And it is in the same uh, you know spirit as earlier the bulk behaves uh, differently than the edges and, and so it is a it is a topological insulator. Before we go into that uh, let me uh, give you because uh, this model actually concerns superconductivity. So, um, and superconductivity is not a main focus of this course. Uh, however, I just want to give a very brief uh, overview of superconductivity. 
this is usually you know um, taught at the undergraduate level or even at the master's level towards the end uh, of the solid state physics course and uh, sometimes it is you know either uh, uh, covered very hurriedly or uh, sometimes not covered at all. So, it is important uh, that this uh, topic to be learnt you know with uh, interest among the students and it is very important um, uh, sort of part of solid state physics in fact uh, you need to invoke the interaction between the electrons and uh, within a non interacting model this phenomena cannot be understood. So, it is a uh, it is in the many body system uh, the pairing occurs and actually there are Cooper pairs that are formed you must have heard of Cooper pairs and so on which are uh, paired state or bound states of electrons ok. Uh, so, uh, this was in 1911 uh, when uh, Kemerling owns whose uh, picture is here he about 3 years before that uh, this, this uh, temperature has been discovered what I mean by that is uh, uh, liquid helium or rather uh, helium was liquefied in 1908 uh, which uh, makes these 4 Kelvin or 4.2 Kelvin accessible to the experimentalist. I mean it is very close to uh, 0 Kelvin or rather the absolute 0 uh, just 4.2 degrees above that and uh, this temperature is very essential for seeing superconductivity in those days uh, where uh, he took uh, this Kemerling ohms uh, H Kemerling ohms so he was in uh, Leiden uh, Netherlands and he was doing this experiment and so on and then he was he had uh, this ultra clean mercury and uh, it, it showed a sudden drop in the resistivity. So, this is uh, the y axis is a resistivity. So, it was coming like this and then suddenly fell to 0 within a very small window. So, this uh, window is really in temperature in, in it is some 10 to the power minus 3 4 Kelvin it just drops to 0 and he almost immediately realized that this is a new uh, state of matter because if it is uh, comprising of just electrons they would collide with each other and if they collide with each other that will give rise to resistance and if the resistance is becoming 0 it became something like 10 to the power minus 5 uh, which is definitely a non measurable quantity in those days and even now uh, you cannot measure anything lower than that. So, if uh, uh, something falls to 10 to the power minus 5 we uh, usually take that to be 0 and uh, it happens at a temperature which is um, 4.2 Kelvin and um, so as you reduce the temperature you come from larger to smaller temperature and you see that there is a, a sharp drop in the resistivity and this gives rise to a new state of matter which is called as a superconducting state ok. Uh, so, this is that uh, same thing uh, I just wanted to show that uh, this is uh, just the graph and it is a 0 resistance state uh, which means that the state has no resistance which means that it has no uh, free electrons present. Uh, if there are free electrons then they would collide with each other and uh, collision of electrons would give rise to a uh, resistivity which it is not there. So, uh, somehow uh, the electrons become very uh, quiet particles uh, and uh, they do not uh, you know uh, collide with each other. Now, that cannot happen ok. So, something must have happened to the state and in fact, what happens is that there are Cooper pairs that are formed uh, below this temperature uh, and uh, what I mean by Cooper pairs is that it is a bound state of electrons. So, an electron with an up state in the k uh, wave vector k and an electron in the uh, spin state with a minus k they form a bound pair and this is what was uh, very uh, sort of uh, simply seen uh, through uh, some seminal works of uh, Leo Cooper uh, who has uh, one of the persons who has given rise to a uh, microscopic theory of superconductivity in 1957 uh, which was um, by Burdin, Cooper and Schiffer and uh, this called as a BCS theory which uh, later won a 
Nobel Prize. Okay. So, the electrons below this temperature they go into a condensate or they go they become a bound state and um, when they become a bound state they do not interact with each other. Okay. That is they do not collide with each other giving rise to a state of zero resistivity which is what is said. Okay. Uh, Schiffer in his book has said that consider there is a room uh, which is full of uh, you know uh, males and females uh, who are dancing uh, you know in pairs and um, uh, these Cooper pairs are like all the uh, these males and females forming pairs and dancing and one is completely oblivious of the other that is one pair does not recognize that there is another pair. So, they do not collide uh, they do not uh, give rise to any resistive phenomena which uh, would have been there in presence of uh, just electrons that is single electrons. Okay. So, they form a bound pair and uh, how can they form a bound pair that is another question which uh, Cooper tackled and um, some of the properties before we go why it happens uh, there are cert certain properties. So, these are uh, the metallic resistivity you see that it, it sort of uh, you know goes to some value uh, here at even at 0 Kelvin. So, it does not become 0. Whereas, the superconductor at a, a finite temperature which could be say for mercury it was 4.2 Kelvin and then there were very large number of superconductors that are discovered uh, and um, uh, a large uh, number of them also obey BCS theory. But uh, so, this uh, is the, the resistance is plotted versus temperature and, and the first uh, graph shows uh, difference between a uh, good metal and a superconductor. Okay. So, this is the, uh, for a good metal and this is for a superconductor. So, it becomes superconducting at Tc. So, this is what the zero resistivity is all about. Now, there is another interesting phenomenon and an acid test for a superconductor. The superconductor uh, not only can uh, you know uh, sort of lose resistivity and but it also goes into a state which is a perfect diamagnet. What I mean is that if you put a superconductor in a magnetic field, then the magnetic flux lines are pushed out of the sample. And uh, this is uh, the main uh, you know principle behind what is called as a magnetic levitation, which uh, would levitate a train and the uh, uh, wheels of the train will not touch the uh, rails and would uh, be levitated because of the uh, these uh, flux uh, because of the magnetic energy that is. Uh, uh, there is a tremendous magnetic energy because of the bunching of the flux lines in the vicinity of the superconductor. And that is being you know shown here uh, that you have uh, sort of liquid nitrogen and you have say a superconductor which is uh, kept here uh, inside the liquid nitrogen and uh, is a there is a magnet that has been held here and the magnet will just keep floating on the superconductor till the superconductivity exists that is uh, it till you know the liquid nitrogen can support superconductivity this will keep floating and so on. So, it happens because there are large number of flux lines that are just outside the outside the superconductor and this is what is shown here. So, complete expulsion of the flux lines uh, is a property that is known as uh, perfect diamagnetism and this is actually shown by someone called Meisner uh, and uh, Meisner and um, I think his name is Auchenfeld. Okay. Uh, they have independently shown this and uh, this um, is uh, also gives rise to what is called as a uh, perfect diamagnetism. Okay. And in fact, uh, what I mean by perfect diamagnetism is that uh, the m by uh, h uh, which is defined as a chi which is equal to minus 1 and um, uh, if you remember the uh, susceptibility of diamagnets is negative. Uh, so, usually for metals it is of the order of 10 to the power minus 3, 10 to the power minus 4 uh, negative uh, I mean with the sign negative sign. But however, for superconductors it is completely cancelled and uh, it is equal to uh, susceptibility is equal to minus 1. So, there is a best known diamagnet that it one can 
uh, get. So, uh, this is the uh, Cooper pair. So, what happens is that um, is take an analogy uh, of, so there is a lattice in which the lattice you see this here, the lattice is deformed, uh, deformed because of lattice excitations and um, uh, the electrons which are usually repulsive uh, now mediated by these lattice excitations which are called as phonons, they start uh, forming a bound pair and you see a bound pair here. So, both are electrons that is why these uh, within the green uh, circle you see a, a negative sign and they are uh, oppositely directed which means one is an up spin the other is a down spin and they form a bound pair. In momentum space the bound pair is formed between k up and minus k down. Okay. And uh, we usually talk about S wave pairing that is the net angular momentum for the pair is equal to 0, but there could also be a higher angular momentum pairing such as P wave, D wave and so on. Though uh, uh, at least for the P wave the uh, experimental realization is very limited. Uh, nevertheless, we will still talk about a P wave superconductivity as we uh, talk about Kitaev uh, model. This uh, picture that you see here can also be given another analogy that uh, suppose there is a dusty field and uh, there is a horse running in the dusty field. So, as the horse moves uh, through the field and you see it from uh, distance, you do not see the horse, you see that there is a ball of dust which is migrating okay, or which is being you know which is moving uh, in, in one particular direction. So, uh, another horse will not see this horse, but will see a dust of cloud. Okay. Um, so, e exactly in the same spirit uh, because of this lattice excitations and because of this phonons, one electron uh, sees uh, the uh, other electron not as an electron, but as a positive cloud which uh, is picked up by the you know the motion of the electron and the positive charges are picked up around it. And, um, and that is why uh, one electron gets attracted towards the uh, other electron which now is engulfed by uh, a positive charge. So, it sees it as a positive charge and get uh, you know attracted to it and forms a bound pair. You could ask the same question that why does not this first electron see uh, the other electron that is the second electron as a, a cloud. I know that will happen, but that will happen at a time scale which is much larger. Okay. So, uh, this electron actually sees a positive cloud will happen at a much lower time scale and that is why uh, the Cooper pairing is formed. And uh, there are various um, you know um, sort of support for this uh, pairing scenario and uh, uh, people have uh, gone ahead and calculated what is called Tc the transition temperature at which this happens. So, this Tc is the transition temperature at which the resistivity vanishes and so on. And um, I mean unfortunately, we will not talk about a, a k up and a k down minus k down kind of pairing which is called as a S wave pairing. But here uh, let us write it in, in real space and we will talk about pairing between up up electrons and down down electrons and so on. Okay. So, uh, it is uh, and these are called as the P wave pairing and uh, the Kitaev chain consists of a P wave superconductor. Okay. So, superconductor with P wave pairing. Let me give you preliminaries before we uh, do calculations on this. So, this is the schematic picture of um, uh, so this blue uh, thing that you see here the wire it is a semiconducting wire. Okay, or it has conducting properties like a tight binding chain. And this green uh, base that you see is actually a P wave superconductor. And uh, uh, so, uh, these tight binding chain or the semiconducting chain picks up these uh, because it is in the vicinity it picks up the P wave superconducting correlations. Okay. Um, just uh, one or two words on uh, what we want to show is that usually you know uh, C uh, L dagger C M dagger uh, C uh, P C Q 
is a form of the interaction where L, M, P, Q can be um, real space uh, indices or maybe momentum indices and so on. Uh, so, this is the interaction term and there is a Coulomb interaction with some you know some V0 and things like that which depends on uh, uh, either momentum or position and so on. So, uh, this is a 4 particle operator and from whatever little we have discussed about the tight binding model or the second quantized notation, uh, the kinetic energy is a single particle operator which looks like you know uh, C k dagger C k okay, with some epsilon k here and so on so forth. And uh, there could be a spin uh, which is uh, not included here, but then you have to sum over spin and so on. So, this is a kinetic energy or uh, we can write it in real space as uh, say for example, T i j uh, C i dagger C j okay, and i and j are nearest neighbors. Now, you see that this is a 2 electron problem and there is a 4 electrons. So, 2 electron and 4 electrons and uh, this is what creates a problem because you cannot write it in the form of a matrix because one term contains uh, 4 particle operators and the other term contains 2 particle operators. So, there is no common basis for one to represent both the terms uh, within the same formalism. But um, a solution of that is uh, that you do a mean field decoupling. Uh, what is a mean field decoupling? It is like saying that you know what is the average field uh, felt by a student in the class of many other students. Uh, the student uh, the under consideration uh, can have different you know interactions with different people, but then we disregard that there is any difference in interaction. We uh, replace the entire student accepting him or her uh, by uh, all other students and this is the essence of mean field theory. And in the mean field theory, what we do is uh, we calculate these C L uh, dagger C M dagger, we calculate the expectation of this and leave these as uh, operators. So, uh, now when you take the expectation, it becomes a number or you do a C L dagger C M dagger and a C P C Q. Okay? So, you take you know the average values or expectation values of these things which are the expectation values taken uh, with respect to the ground state of the Hamiltonian. Now, uh, these are uh, if they are numbers then let them let us call them as some delta which is uh, the superconducting uh, pairing amplitude because there are pairs that are being considered. So, a dagger and a dagger means there are 2 particles. Uh, the correlator of 2 particles uh, being you know generated into the system because C L dagger C M dagger acting on a vacuum would give rise to you know 2 particles at L and M. L and M could be site indices, could be momentum indices and so on and so forth. So, uh, these is called delta which is a superconducting gap and this is called as a delta star which is the, uh, the complex conjugate of that. So, now, uh, we are left with operators which are C P C Q and C L dagger C M dagger okay? or you can simply write it as you know a delta C P C Q plus a Hermitian conjugate. Okay? The Hermitian conjugate will be the second term which is here. Okay, with all these considerations, we write down a, a chain Hamiltonian okay? which is uh, just like what we have talked about here there are n sites of this chain if it is a tight binding chain, but however only uh, for the sake of simplicity we only consider 2 sites of this Kitaev chain okay? and this is a 2 site Hamiltonian. This is the, um, the chemical potential corresponding to site 1, let us call this a site 1 and call this a site 2. This is a chemical potential for site 2, both are same in this particular case. And there is a kinetic energy which uh, allows the electron to hop from uh, 1 to 2. So, uh, we are taking uh, when I say semiconducting wire or a tight binding chain, we implicitly assume that there are electrons being present. So, this is the kinetic energy of the electrons 
and this is the important one which is the superconducting term. This is the kinetic energy and this is the chemical potential which fixes the number of particles. So, mu is the chemical potential and T is the hopping term etcetera, delta is the P wave superconducting order parameter. Okay. Uh, as I said earlier that P wave superconductivity is not very common in uh, nature, uh, in fact very uncommon, uh, probably there is just one realization of P wave pairing, but however uh, for the sake of studying an interesting model which gives rise to topological properties we uh, assume a P wave correlation. In fact, uh, it could be a S wave superconductor which is much more commonly available in nature, but uh, that uh, requires you know more terms to be considered such as you know the spin orbit coupling and um, various other things I mean magnetic field and, uh, uh, and uh, other things. Okay. So, uh, we are talking about a P wave pairing, this is a P wave superconducting term this is the these uh, amplitude or this called as a gap function ok. Uh, so, this is a gap function and this is uh, kinetic energy and then the chemical potential and I have just taken two sides of that tight binding chain. In general there are n sides, but let us just uh, do the uh, two side problem. The Hamiltonian if you write it in this basis, now this is uh, slightly different than what we have considered earlier. Uh, there is a C1 dagger C1 and a C2 dagger C2. So, both dagger and undagger things are here and uh, in uh, general uh, we are familiar in writing with C1 dagger C2 dagger etcetera etcetera, but however this is to you know bring out. So, this is a, a particle uh, degree of freedom and uh, annihilation is related to whole degree of freedom. So, the Hamiltonian can be written in the particle hole basis okay, which is like this and uh, because uh, the, the number of entries in the basis is 4. So, we have a 4 by 4 matrix where uh, minus mu plus mu and minus mu and plus mu are there in the diagonal elements because you see that it is C1 dagger C1 and C2 dagger C2. So, if you write down all these things uh, the way we have written it down here, then you get this 4 by 4 matrix and uh, which had uh, it is a spar matrix. I mean the sum elements which is equal to 0, but then there are uh, these all these elements that are non-zero you know. I mean this block, this block none of the blocks is equal to 0, even though some of the terms vanish. Okay. It is you can just write it down, it is so easy to write down and um, then what you can do is that you can write down a, a slightly new notation in which uh, because you are creating a particle. So, you can write it as one electron E for electron and one stands for the site and when it is annihilating you can write it as one H. Uh, C2 dagger will be 2 E and uh, C2 will be 2 H. So, now instead of writing it C1 dagger C1, C2 dagger C2, we can write in terms of these you know the basis which is 1 E, 2 E, uh, 2 H etcetera etcetera and um, E and H refer to the electron and the whole states. Okay. So, uh, let me uh, stop with uh, stating only the two st uh, site uh, Hamiltonian because uh, it will require uh, you know time to sink in these ideas that uh, we are writing down a two site Hamiltonian. So, now we have written it as one electron, one electron these uh, cats and bras and there is a one hole, one hole, there is a two electron two electron, two hole, two hole and then there is a one electron, two electron, one hole, two hole, one electron, two hole and two electron, one hole. Uh, so, that kind of a basis and nevertheless uh, you can also uh, diagonalize this Hamiltonian and this Hamiltonian gives rise to the eigenvalues which are given by uh, these uh, four eigenvalues which are 
t uh, divided uh, t plus uh, square root of delta square plus mu square t minus uh, delta square uh, square root of delta square plus mu square minus of t minus this that is this one here with a minus sign and uh, this one here with a minus sign here. Okay. So, these are the 4 eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4 and corresponding to that the 4 column eigenvectors can be figured uh, found, found out. So, this is what we have done these are uh, that is an element that is an element that is an element and that is an element. So, it is a 4 column vector uh, 4 element column vector and there are 4 of them corresponding to the 4 eigenvalues. We uh, are going to generalize this to n sites and we will see that uh, we will see the topological properties of this model and uh, how the concept of uh, Majorana fermions uh, emerge from here. Um, a concept that was originally proposed in the high energy physics, but uh, could never be realized in nature. Whereas, we actually see that there are uh, Majorana fermions which are uh, nothing but uh, the particles uh, which are their own conjugates are called as a Majorana fermions. Okay. Uh, Majorana is a name of uh, a scientist uh, who has proposed this and we will see Majorana fermions and uh, we will uh, further talk about the, uh, the properties of this the topological properties of this model. Again try to write it down in terms of a d dot sigma so that the winding can be uh, defined and one can actually uh, look at the, uh, the how in the dx dy plane uh, the loop encloses the origin or it does not enclose the origin which will decide that uh, whether uh, this uh, has uh, topological features or not. And um, these are zero energy modes just like we have seen zero energy modes in the uh, SSH model these Majorana fermions will um, be the zero energy modes and which can because of their property that the particle is same as its conjugate uh, they cannot be separated. So, you cannot uh, split a Majorana fermion and make them separate. So, if you at all do anything you can shift them up from the zero energy by giving an additional energy, but you cannot separate them and uh, the whole idea that uh, these Majoranas are really formed at two uh, ends of the chain that is the two. Uh, edge modes um, that are the static edge modes of the system and in principle they are uh, they can be infinitely far away depending on the length of the chain. Uh, now, if these two are so uh, correlated so much uh, so correlated uh, that means, uh, the whole idea is that whether they can be used for any quantum information processing of quantum information or quantum uh, computation because uh, they are far away yet they are correlated which means that uh, if you know that in one end they are there it will all they will also be there in the other end. Okay. So, we will see uh, that uh, in the following lecture uh, which will be uh, totally on this n site uh, Kitaev chain uh, and uh, this is the second paradigmatic model for uh, topology. Okay. We will stop here. Thank you for your attention.